The people we're seeing tonight, honoring tonight, uh, are those who are giving inspired philanthropy, giving to make uh, a difference, most important thing about what we hear from all of these leaders of uh, these foundations in the United Way is how committed they are to making a difference in our community. Philanthropy really seeks to change the human condition and I think that's what these foundations and these philanthropic organizations are trying to do. The 2015 Interfaith Works Leadership Award Dinner honors the Allen Foundation, Central New York Community Foundation, the Gifford Foundation, the Jewish Community Foundation of Central New York, the Dorothy and Marshall M. Reisman Foundation, the John Ben Snow Foundation, and the United Way of Central New York. Through support of educational and humanitarian services, fostering community collaborations, support for convening and facilitating discussion on key community issues, and building the capacities of organizations and individuals, the 2015 ILAD Honorees Collective Impact is extraordinary. They provide a voice to those who are often ignored, and they provide vital resources to make things happen in our community. What follows are a few of the stories that these foundations help make possible. Ampu just meant, you know, a lot to me, you know, they really pushed me into like getting my bachelor's, which I thought was a great thing. And, you know, for, and I, was, I lived off campus up in Oswego and, you know, they helped me find an apartment off campus and actually paid for my rent one summer when I ran out of my financial aid and just bringing me back and forth, you know, providing rights, you know, bringing, you know, back and forth to Syracuse and paying for my textbooks and just, you know, kept in touch and just helped me, you know, you know, whatever. It meant like a family to me. I feel great that, you know, I'm returning the favor to help people in like the way I was helped when I was going to school. They've always said once on point, always on point. Uh, they feel that even after they graduate, they come back. They bring their children here, their neighbors, their brothers, their sisters. And, you know, we help them with the jobs. And then we also help them to go back to the community and to recruit other people into On Point for college. So it's like, it's like a family. I personally remember having a phone call <laughs> with Iffy here saying to him when I know he got his refund check, say, this is how so you're going to get... This is how you're going to pay tuition for your senior year. You can't send it all to South Sudan. Like she said, she gave me that call and said, please, just finish your degree. Don't send all your refund check back to the family, <laughs> which I sort of just sneaked away and sent a little bit. But, you know, it's, it's like, you know. My... I think we all feel when we get together and put our resources together, we can make a, a, a bigger dent in what is needed if it's in education or uh, like help at the Samaritan Center. Uh, it just goes a lot further in the community. Although we make a grant there, I'm personally involved and I see the faces and I see warm meals and I see them walking out with a full stomach and being able to go to that job now because they're fed or meeting On Point for College graduates or uh, hearing the stories of the kids who are now just in college and where they came from and knowing that that wouldn't be possible without somebody helping them break through that little barrier that they need to be broken through of. I came here out of necessity for the first time in my life. Um, uh, two things happened to me in one week that I thought would never would, you know, through alcoholism. Was, uh, I became homeless and ended up in the mission. And I ended up in a soup kitchen. Never thought that would happen to me, but that's the nature of that beast. And uh, I was here coming here for about a week or so, and they came out and asked if anybody wanted to help out. And I've been a chef my whole life, and I, I jumped at the opportunity, and I said, yeah, you've been feeding me for a week or two. It's the least I can do to help you out. And uh, well, it gave me a purpose. And uh, I hung in there. I showed up and didn't take a drink. And, uh, here I am. Uh, Fifteen months ago, I was homeless and unemployable, and today I have uh, 
two half jobs, a beautiful apartment, and I just bought a car. So things do change. There's so much happening with this project. It's a, it's a gift to the people we serve. It's a gift to the community. It's an opportunity to bring the folks that we serve out of a basement space without windows or light into the most beautiful building ever. It allows us to start with this central um, connection point that is a, a shared meal, breaking bread across the community kitchen table, and then offering the support and the love and the opportunity um, from there that lets people create a new life for themselves and find, find hope um, for a better future. to create an informed citizenship uh, within our community, uh, not only in terms of uh, what our community is and how it operates, but even more so, what do we need to be? And then to help create, uh, I'll say, dialogue on how to create healthy change from where we are today, breaking through those barriers to what we need to be as a community. People come uh, to this dialogue uh, convinced that they don't want to see what's happening in other cities around the country where communication between the police and the community are breaking down badly um, and they want to make sure that that doesn't happen in Syracuse and we can figure a path through these difficult times where we won't have to uh, uh, end up in real trouble. Let's get together, let's talk. These are some experiences that I've had that's happened to me. And now for the first time I can actually sit and talk with a member of the police department and say, hey, this happened to me. Maybe you can explain why this happened. What's your perspective? We really have to look at these situations. They're very complex and they're very, there's race, class, uh, all kinds of identities that are, are in this mix and we have to we have to figure a path through, and this is one of the places where it's one of the hardest places in communities for people to actually come up with some common ground. Let's dispel some myths. Let's get some stereotypes. Let's really look at my job as a police officer and how I interact with the community and how I must interact with the community. Then there's community members that say, this is how I interact with the police officer and this is how I must interact with the police officer. But let's change that, those musts and how I do into what can I do to make it a better interaction. We meet nonprofits where they are to support their growth, their capacity, uh, and their needs to become more effective toward in advancing their missions. Our capacity building really focuses on a range, a spectrum of issues affecting nonprofits, from executive coaching and performance management to promoting strategic partnerships to working with really small grassroots organizations, even unincorporated associations and neighborhoods. So we see nonprofits and organizations and uh, folks who have goodwill and are trying to improve their communities facing capacity issues across a broad spectrum. A good example is our work with really small grassroots organizations through the Leadership Classroom, or TLC, to help them achieve um, a better understanding of how to be strategic in their leadership, how to move forward um, and execute on a program, and we provide grant-making resources to help them actually achieve their ends. Our capacity building programs uh, at the Gifford Foundation are based on a concept that everyone has capacity and every organization has capacity. And we try to use our uh, resources, our financial resources and the experience of our staff to help um, organizations grow that capacity and to help them to get to the next level, whatever that level is. And So as a community, I think we need to come together and we need to do those sorts of things because that's the thing to do. So we've got to do these things as a community. I think it's, it's something that's just not, not that we should do, but it, it's, a, it's an obligation that we should have as a community. When you see a problem, it's partly your problem to help solve and to help solve that problem by getting involved uh, either financially or from a volunteer perspective and not just seeing a problem and walking away and thinking it's somebody else's to solve, it's, it's our problem. I think we need to be champions. We need to say we support yeah. and we recommend you support 
programs of the Samaritan Center or work train or interfaith works, those kinds of programs that really do help people. Education, we should be champions for that. And I think it's gonna be valuable for all our organizations to encourage those young folks to begin to at least reach for the torch. They might not be ready to take it, but they can start to reach for it. One of the programs we're most proud of at the Jewish Community Foundation of Central New York is our Teen Funders Program. Here you see some of our current teen funders. These are youngsters who have opened funds at the Jewish Community Foundation, B'nai Mitzvah funds. Uh, they open them when they have their bar and bat mitzvahs, when they're 13, and then over the next number of years that they are in our community, they then meet and uh, review grant proposals and decide where they would like their funds to benefit the local community, the general community, all around the United States. If I keep out of myself and try to do the next best thing, um, I can help somebody else and, uh, and just keep it going, you know, to pay it forward. So once somebody had my back when I was going to school now, I think it's my turn now that I, I'm in position to help. I can, you know, return to faith and help someone else. It allows us to connect as a larger community to what's important, um, supporting each other through life and, and helping each other along what can be a very difficult road. This is not the answer to anything, but it's a, it's a good beginning and it's an honest beginning and uh, it is uh, hopeful.